Hello, this is Mario Farina. Today I'll be reading a story to you called A Deja Vu Wedding. This is the uh, picture at the front of the story. The story is in smashwords.com. That's www.smashwords.com. And it's free uh, for you to read and to download. While there, you'll see many other stories that uh, I've written that are free for you to read and download. And download. Please do. A Deja Vu Wedding. There was a two hour break between the math classes that I taught at Hudson Valley Community College and I was walking north on Jefferson Street heading toward Walnut Street. At Walnut, I would turn right and walk half a mile to Placid Park. I was deep in thought, and when I arrived at Walnut, I didn't turn right because the traffic light for autos was red. Absent-mindedly, I had not realized that the light was for cars, not pedestrians. There were, some, there were some cars waiting at the light, and a young, attractive blonde woman was crossing the street, walking toward me. Professor Wilcox, she called about when she was still some yards from me. Why are you waiting at the light? You're a guy, not a car. It was Annette Shepard. She taught English down the hall, not far from my classroom. Becoming conscious of how foolish I must have seemed, I hastened to say, hello, Annette. I was mulling over a problem I'll be discussing with my class this afternoon and wasn't aware that I could have turned right and just kept walking. You're the typical absent-minded professor, she said, smiling broadly. I think it's charming. You're going to the park. Yes, I am, I responded. How did you know? I go there a lot myself, she said. You've never noticed me. You're oblivious to everything when you're on the way there. It's dangerous. I worry about you. What were you pondering so intensely today? I was awed that Annette would be worrying about me and pleased, but I didn't let on. Secretly, I felt affection for her, but was too timorous about showing this when I didn't know what was her possible relationship with others. Ever heard of Goldbach's even number conjecture? I asked. No. What in the world is that? She retorted. It's an unproven problem, I said. Goldbach showed that numbers greater than three can be demonstrated to be the sum of two prime numbers. Nobody has ever found an exception, but the conjecture has never been proved. And you're trying to prove it? I was thinking about it, but I don't think I'm smart enough to prove it, I commented. Many others have tried and failed. It's beyond me, that problem, she said. But when it's solved, you'll be the one to do it. Again, I was pleased. She didn't fully understand the tremendous compliment that she had paid me. Many great mathematicians with credentials far greater than mine had tried and failed. With Annette leading the way, she and I were walking toward the park. Let's sit together today at the park, she suggested. You can tell me more about math problems. Math problems are too dull, I stated. Let's talk about verbs and nouns. Oh no, she explained. Verbs and nouns are to you what prime numbers and math problems would be to me. Let's discuss more interesting things. At that moment, I had a sudden feeling that Annette and I were re-experiencing a conversation we had had at an earlier time. Annette, I said, I've just had a flash of deja vu. It seemed we had had this conversation exactly the same at some time in the past. I can't confirm that, Roger, she said. You and I have never talked this long before. With us, 
it's always been good morning, nice day, and good night. I knew she was right. She had addressed me by my first name. That was a first. I had always been professor before. I felt myself being drawn closer to her. I'm enjoying talking to you, I said. You're easy to talk to. You're easy to talk to also, she said. But one must break a shell of shyness to get to you. She appeared on the verge of saying more, but suddenly fell silent. I waited. Strange, she, mu she mused, that deja vu spell you had. I just had one too. I suddenly felt I had told you about your shell sometime in the past, she reflected as if to herself. We had reached the park and went through the gate. The park was crowded, but there were unused tables for picnickers near the gate. We selected one that was the right size for two people and sat. It was an early May day and the sun felt good. Annette was wearing a light yellow spring dress and I was in shirt sleeves. Annette, are you seeing anyone? I asked. My question was not specific, but she knew what I meant. No, she responded. You? I had been deeply involved in my education and early teaching positions. At age 35, I realized that I should have been making plans for a family, but had been negligent. No, I responded with the feeling that an explanation was in order. I paused to tell the feeling. resume with, with I had been deeply involved. I had been deeply involved in my education and early teaching positions. At age 35, I realized I should have been making plans for a family, but had been negligent. No, I responded with the feeling that an explanation was in order. I paused to plan the words I would use for this purpose when another feeling of deja vu overwhelmed my thoughts. Annette, I said, I can't get over the feeling that what I'm experiencing with you today has all happened before. The feeling is very strong. I'm feeling the same, she said. I can even predict what you're going to say to me and what I'm going to respond. To me, Deja vu doesn't explain it. I'm a little frightened. I don't think this meeting we're having today was a random happenstance, I said. There may be a force that is in control, one that we don't know very much about. By nature, I'm a materialistic person and feel uncomfortable saying this. Do you suppose that all this has happened before, that we simply don't remember it? Maybe in a dream, I said. Dreams can be strong ones, but they tend to evaporate soon after we wake. If all this is a dream coming back to me, it's a very pleasant one, and I'm not going to resist it. I second the motion, she said. What I'm seeing is pleasant, too. Shall we compare notes? I'd like that, I admitted. You first, she challenged. In my dream, I tell you that you're a beautiful woman, and I'm strongly attracted to you. I was experiencing a boldness that was unusual for me. I knew it was because I was relating a dream and not expressing anything personal. In my dream, you tell me this, and I respond that I've been very fond of you for a long time, she replied, which, by the way, is how I feel in real life. The ice had been broken. Now I could express myself in very clear language. 
What I said about being attracted to you is true in real life too, I said. How wonderful that we've had the same dream, she said. I do believe what you said about another force taking over, pretending it is deja vu. I do believe that we were meant for each other, and this is how that force became known to us. We spent the next hour chattering with each other about what our lives together would be like. Amazingly, we agreed on everything. Marriage plans, honeymoon, home, children, careers, and more. Too soon, it became time for us to return to our classes. We were as happy as eight-year-olds. We walked hand in hand to our classrooms. Our deja vu wedding happened 40 years ago. Annette and I have lived happy lives together. We're retired now. Rain has fallen into our lives as it does in others. But we have no complaints. We are parents of two wonderful children, grandparents of three, and looking forward to more. The picture on the cover of this book is of, is of us on our honeymoon at Daytona Beach. We had the sign made so that we could have the school posted on their bulletin board. Though I tried, I was never able to solve the problem that Goldbach had proposed. That is the end of the story. I hope that like you liked it. Tomorrow, I'll have another story for you. Thanks for looking. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.